Welcome to Connecting to Data Sources. In this video, we will be creating data sources in InfoPath from the views and subsets we published using Enterprise Services, and then bind them to the controls on our form. The next step is to add the data source that will provide us with the employee name and the data from September through August. So we've already published that in TM1. Let's go ahead and add it just like we did for the drop downs in the subsets. We will add receive data. We will go against the SOAP web service. Connect up to Enterprise Services and choose monthly compensation planning. We will then be presented with a list of parameters and these parameters will drive the contents of the data. What we will be doing a little bit later is hooking up these drop downs to each of these parameters. And so as the user chooses a different department, it will be fed to the business unit parameter and it will alter the contents that would get returned. For now we're going to leave them alone and it will default to the way it was originally created. Again, we do not want to store a copy in the form, but this time we do not want to automatically retrieve the data when the form is opened because we're going to control that from when the user finishes the selection criteria. So we're going to uncheck this one and choose finish. Now, whenever you add a data source to an InfoPath form, what gets created is in this fields list is a separate section for each of the fields that you're bringing from your data source plus main which are all the ones that are living right on the form itself and so you'll notice now that we have a section called monthly compensation planning and if I choose that you'll see it the list of fields are broken out into two groups the query fields and the data fields. The query fields are what we saw earlier when we first set up the secondary data source and if we fill in values for these and rerun the query the results will come back relative to those values specified. So if they change the business unit or the year it will show up the data corresponding to that. Now in the results that Enterprise Services returns, you will see that we return in the data what version and business unit that was selected and pulled back, as well as a row set which contains the set of rows that will be returned which we will use in a repeating table. And notice that there is a rows element. So this is the rows element that corresponds to every row we get back. If you expand that, you'll see the columns for each of the rows. In this case, employee, and then September through August. So to bring this into our InfoPath form, we simply click on the rows and drag that into the form and choose the style that we want to create those set of rows. In our case, it's going to be repeating table. And what you'll see is it will go ahead and bring in the columns as we had them specified when we published the view. What is different between this and our prototype is we've added a total field. So we're going to insert a column to the left and we're going to title this total. Now also you'll notice that in our prototype we had a different sizing for these fields so we need to adjust these accordingly and this is again done the same way we highlight all of the columns we right click and choose table properties column and we set all of those columns to a size of 60 the first two columns we will then set to a size of 150 for the first one let me make sure I'm in that column set it to 150 and the next column will size at 70 pixels. That should look then very close to what we had in our prototype. 
Now the total that we're missing here we're going to be calculating later. The other pieces that we need to take care of on our prototype is these drop-downs that we created were given generic names as we just added them to our form. Field 1, Field 2, and Field 3. You'll notice that when I select these in the fields list it highlights which one they correspond to. So let's give them proper names. We'll call this one version. Field number two, we'll call this one department. And field number three, we're going to call year. Now since these are automatically pulled when the form is open, but the table is not, we're going to add a button that will perform that action for us. So we add a button to the form and if we double click on it it will bring us to the control properties and we can relabel this form to say retrieve or query data and now if I click on the rules I can associate some rules for when the user presses the button so let's associate some rules now and as we mentioned before what we need to do is take the version the department and the year that is selected here and make them parameters to the monthly compensation planning view that we created earlier so let's do that we do that by creating a new action and we give it the name of the rule so this is query data and let's add an action so the first action we're going to do is set a field value now the value we're going to set is the parameter that came from the monthly compensation planning view so here's the monthly compensation planning and as we said before we have two sections the query fields and the data fields so we're going to go into the query fields and we're going to set the version equal to what was chosen in the drop-down. So the version field will be set to, and we're going to insert a field, and we got that field from our selection section, version field. So again, and we choose OK, so again what's happening is we're taking the value from this field and putting it into the parameters, and they're both called version in this case. So we choose OK and we do the same thing for the other two fields. So again we select what field we want to set the value of first and then what value it needs to become. And so we choose that one from our selection criteria. Choose OK. And we add the last one again we want to set the query parameter for year equal to what was selected by the user and choose OK. So now we have three rules associated with clicking this button which will set the parameters for generating the query. Now we need to do one more rule which says query the data and we simply then say which of the data connections we want to perform which in this case it's monthly compensation planning and choose OK. So this action will then set the three values and run the query and the results will automatically show up in this table. So we're ready to go ahead and preview this form. Let's remove our prototype for now off the form and we'll go ahead and preview again we'll be prompted with the dialog here saying are you sure you want to do this and so now when the user selects the choices budget for human resources for 2010 we'll choose query data and that's what we saw when we initially created the view let's now change that to executive branch and you'll notice that my list of employees changes let's try marketing and we have a different list of employees. 
This concludes Connecting to Data Sources Part 2. In the next video, we will show you how to apply the final formatting so that the form can then be published to Enterprise Services.